Welcome to the Breaking 90 podcast, where we talk about all things sustainable fat loss. We take people on 90-day journeys to creating fat loss forever. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Breaking 90 podcast. I'm your host, Alex Harriman, here today with my co-host, Kelly Sarlo, and we are two of the coaches of Breaking 90 Fitness. Thank you for being here and listening with us. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Hey, hey. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good. What's new? What is new? Um, well, you you got to see something funny the other day, and and so I think it's worth it's worth mentioning here. Is uh, I, I I don't I think I mentioned it on an episode a while back, but I've started doing some some CrossFit training, and uh, I did a workout. I did two workouts the other day, back to back, like a Thursday Friday, and my body was so sore that Kelly came to visit us one night and like I could like barely get off the floor I've, I've like it's been a long time since I've been that sore and it's um it's humbling but it's great because it's it's just shows us that there's always ways to challenge and adapt um I've been training now for 16 years and uh I can still like do a different style of exercise and absolutely crush my body. So it's, it's, it's really fun to know that there's, there's no limit to what we can expose ourselves to and challenge ourselves with. That's really neat. I like your attitude because you're saying it's fun and there's like um, an excitement with the surprise. And I think some people will listen to this and be like, you've been working out for 16 years and you still know how to make your body sore. Like, some people would think what's wrong with me or what's wrong with my body or I'm not in good enough shape. And that's, that's not even on your mind. Yeah. And now keep in mind, like the goal shouldn't always just to be get sore, sore, sore either. Right. Like I went into these workouts and went like full throttle, tried to crush it. And, and that's not how I would approach every workout. And it's not how I'd recommend most people approach every workout, but the, these workouts, I was trying to do that and I paid the price. And it's like, it's pretty cool to know that you like, there's unlimited ways we can continue to challenge ourselves. Mm-hmm. That being I, said, I do I do think everybody should do that once in a while. Like crush yeah. yourself, see what you're capable of. I'm gonna quote you. I, I think <laughs> you should crush yourself. You do you because how how else do you know what you're yeah. capable? Of? If you show up to every workout and you give it 80% intensity, you're going to continue making consistent progress. That's that's smart. But once in a while, we have to test our limits to know what where they actually exist, or else how do we know we're working at 80%? Yeah, this is cool. And I'm right? thinking back to the conversation that night when you were laying starfished on the floor, okay? Um, <laughs> and like you were commenting how you're an ideal partner because you will you will adjust your expectations for whoever you're par- you're partnered up with, right? For sure. That's cool. I like sure. it. Yeah. All right. What are we doing today? Well, I thought I'd surprise you a little bit. Okay. Today, I want to talk about we're coming into a busy time of year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I want to talk about navigating time and priorities as we come into the holidays because it's something that... um it's something that no matter how much we mention it, it catches people by surprise. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's not all that different from what you're going to experience in the new year with your new schedule and uh, your newly found motivation that you have to adapt to. But it all circles back to the idea that we have to be ready to pivot, adapt, and adjust our schedules and our expectations and our bands. Yep. Right? So we know that we've got, I mean, everybody everybody celebrates different different holidays and different traditions and different amounts of meals and family get-togethers, but I think for the most part, December is freaking crazy for a lot of people. Your weekends are booked, kids are in sports, you have events every every week probably and then near the end of the month you probably have a couple large meals that you're you're expected to participate in yeah so i got notes go ahead sorry i got notes i'm ready when you are okay so we're we're 
couple weeks out now from those big meals. Um, what should people be doing right now, in your opinion, to to best prepare themselves in the the last the second half of December? Okay, so you, this is navigating time and priorities. Yes. Okay, yes. so we're, we're away from those meals, but also those social commitments. So just kind of putting those on people's radar. So I've got a, a few things because there's a lot of different ways to approach this. The first thing I'm going to do is reference one of our podcasts that we did earlier this year about responsibilities versus priorities, because mm. in that one, Jarek and I talked about how to evaluate both of those things. And I think a lot of individuals think that they are the same thing um, and they're not necessarily right. Responsibilities are things that you you are personally responsible to spearhead and get done, right? And they might be the same thing as a priority, but also something that is a priority for you might not be something that you have to be responsible for. So knowing the difference between the two and and being able to itemize your agenda or your schedule accordingly is going to be really important. The other thing I will say to you is if you can brain dump all the things that you expect to be able to do, want to do, have been invited to do, and you can go through that entire list and actually evaluate it based on your desire, where you are considering what you actually want to engage in through all of this, and that is separate from responsibilities and priorities, sometimes we leave desire off the list and we think just because there was an invitation, it's now something that we have to figure out how to get to or be involved in. So yeah. knowing that if this is just not something you want to be involved in, that you can reevaluate and you can decline invitations. If you need a permission slip, let this be it. Good. <laughs> Kelly will actually write one. and I, <laughs> I absolutely would do that. <laughs> um can you just give an example of of when something might be a priority for someone but not their responsibility yeah so it might be a priority um to to attend a, a family gathering for example but it might not be your responsibility to organize it it mm. might not be your responsibility to cook for it even I see. right it might not even be a responsibility um to you know um kind of figure out who's going and coordinate anything it could it. be hey i want to attend and that's the most effort i can give to this got it yeah okay that that that's clear I, w- I was just trying to picture that in my in my mind but that's that's great yeah and the reason I bring that up as the example is because so much of this time of year um, tradition is something that is in place and rarely questioned so if you have been going to a family dinner for 17 years you know mm-hmm. maybe you're an in-law even and it's been a 15 or 17 year tradition and it's like we always bring the dessert just because you've always done it doesn't mean it has to be your responsibility. It doesn't mean it has to persist that way. We can challenge how we've always done things and Mm -hmm. talk about what we actually need this time of year. Right. Cool. Yeah. I love this. This has just got me thinking like if if, for, for those of you listening to this, you're probably listening to this for health and fitness advice. And so now you're trying to stay on track with your nutrition, your training, whatever it might be. And you're getting overwhelmed by the idea of these commitments that you have coming up but maybe the overwhelm isn't actually the event. Maybe the overwhelm is the prep for the event. And so now, just like Kelly's saying, by having this simple conversation, like, hey, I'm really trying to focus on this right now. I have, I I, I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to get my 20 minutes purposeful movement in today. And, and is there any chance like somebody else can prep that dessert that I typically prep because I, I need that time to, for myself that that can remove the stress from this whole event, right? Rather than you just being like, fuck, I don't want to go to this event. <laughs> all, all because I have to bring a dessert. Yeah. Right. Again, it's not all or nothing. And this is health and fitness. This is your mindset. This is your mental health. Yeah. And I, you know, part of us can look forward to being with our loved ones and simultaneously dread doing it because there's so much expectation built around it. And it's mm-hmm. really unfortunate that our feelings toward our people tend to kind of slip into that negative space all because of expectations that never got questioned. Right. Yeah. I will say too, you know, I love, I love how you you're talking about recognizing what you need to do for you. You don't owe someone an explanation. You don't have to say to someone, 
I I need to not bring the dessert because, right? It can simply be, this is not something I'm able to do this year. This is not something I'm willing to do this year. And the, the, you don't have to quantify it or qualify it. Good. Yeah. Okay. So going back to evaluating our items, if we're brain dumping everything that we want to get done, have been invited to everything that's on our list of priorities and responsibilities, can we also recognize that there's only 24 hours in a day, right? We have to be able to accept that there's still only so much time. Can we look at circle highlight, whatever you need to do, the things that need to be put on the back burner, right? So understanding that saying yes to one thing often means that we need to say no to another, if only temporary. Um, What things on your list can you realistically compromise in terms of time, energy, and effort while other things have become a priority in this busy season for you? Because it's unrealistic to expect that you are going to do it all, right? So if you are now someone who's in charge of buying the gifts, wrapping the gifts, you know, prepping for the dinner, hosting the dinner, cleaning up the dinner, you can't keep everything else on your list and add an exponential amount of things. Okay. Check this out. Cause my dad, this is um like the best piece of life advice my dad ever gave me. And, and uh, it's, it's stuck with me like so, so deeply now since he gave this that I reference it all the time. But when Emerson was first born, um, it was, it, it turned my world upside down. Like it was like overnight, everything changed <laughs> yeah. and, and, and sleep changed drastically. And the amount of free time I changed, I had changed drastically overnight. And, and I know every parent can relate to this, but it's not something you can prepare for. It mm-hmm. just happens. And you're like, Oh shit. Okay. That I, I kind of had an idea that was going to happen, but I didn't realize that was going to happen. So, so Jerica is probably like listening to this right now. And she's like, <laughs> Oh my God. Um, but I, I remember calling him at one point and I was just like, I was stressed. I was overwhelmed. I was like, dad, the lawn has to be cut. There's like, there's minor repairs that need to be done around the house. The dishes are piling up um the house needs to be clean like there's like there's all this stuff that Devin and I were normally able to stay on top of that like all of a sudden was greatly overwhelming and so this this is what reminds me of exactly what you're explaining stuff that we can navigate easily through maybe most of the year all of a sudden with these extra priorities thrown at us at this time of year can become overwhelming and so he was just like Alex don't do it and I was like, what? He's like, what is the worst thing that's going to happen if you don't cut your grass? If you don't clean the dishes? If you don't, if you miss putting the garbage over one week, what is the worst thing that can happen? And I just sat there and I was like, huh. Because <laughs> cause like it was always something that I did prioritize. Get this done, get this done. We'll fit it in, we'll fit it in. But it's like that child now is the biggest priority. If the grass doesn't get cut, the worst thing that happens is the neighbor's like, hey, your grass looks a little long right now. And the world keeps going. (laughs) So that was like, I I don't even know if he realizes this, but that was the most freeing piece of advice he ever gave me. Because now I circle back and I apply that all the time. At Christmas time, if you're overwhelmed, it's like, okay, don't clean the house this week. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It's, It's that like, anyone with anxiety is going to fully understand what you're talking about because we play the and then what game all the time, right? It's like, okay, so I'm anxious about this, then what? And you have to play it out until the very end until you realize, and the end is always nobody died or I didn't die, right? Um, So when you say just don't do it, it's like, oh, right, that's allowed. It's funny though, because we don't think that way. And, and I think, I think people listening to this that have kids are like, yeah, that makes sense. But like now look at it just from this list of priorities, this list of obligations, this list of responsibilities in December and do it the same. Like, don't worry about that shit. That's not going to end the world. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Can I go back to my list? Yeah, go. Okay. This one kind of circles back to our conversation about desire. So invitations for things might have come in on other people's terms, you know, other people's, they've created events and brainstormed the way that they want to celebrate. And what I would challenge you to think about is 
what does celebration actually look like to you, right? Because it doesn't have to be their way or no way. If you right. are invited to a dinner party with friends or family and you're like, I really do want to see them. I really do want to spend time with them, but not for a four hour dinner or not yeah, yeah. Three, three days in a row over at the Christmas holidays or not fill in the blank, right? I don't want to stay up till midnight because I do want to get up for a 7 a.m. workout. Exactly. Like, I'll say this, break the rules, right? Challenge the norm and decide, okay, then what does celebration look like to me? And can you have that conversation and make that invitation? It might be where you turn to an aunt, the only aunt that you want to see at Christmas dinner and say, would you like to go out for tea on, on Friday morning? Um, I'm not going to be at the dinner. I'd love to see you. I'd love to spend time with you. I've got an hour on Friday, right? Like we can create something that does work for us and extend that invitation instead of thinking it's only the one that was extended to us. Right? Or, adjust, or just the one that was extended to you also. Exactly. Like, like if you know it's going to be like a dinner into evening festivities, you'd be like, yeah, I'll show up to the dinner, but I'm going to leave right after. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. So- <laughs> The other, the other two I have on my list, and I'm not sure if you want to jump in at any point. Um, I don't want to say this from a place of privilege, so I'll just kind of preface it this way. Can I pause for a second? Yeah. This was my topic. How do you have a list? Well, you were talking, <laughs> and normally we give the topic to the other person. <laughs> um, I thought it was my job to make the list. Also, this is my niche. What are you? What are you saying? It's just hilarious to me that I showed up with the topic and you have a list today. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I do schedules day in and day out. You know that. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> so so these two go hand in hand. Ask for help. I think this is something that needs to be said out loud. People like somehow forget this constantly. And there's a, you know, a, a large population of people who don't believe they're even allowed to ask for help day in and day out. Um, ask ask someone to help you with the cooking, ask someone to help you do help you with the shopping, whether it's hiring help or asking a friend or family to say like, I need assistance. I can't do this all on my own. Um, there's no shame in that, that, that could actually be some of the quality time that you do enjoy with the other person instead of thinking you have to do it all on your own. Right. Or that if you and your partner said yes to something that it has to fall on both of you and you can't ask for help ask for it. The other, the other thing I wanted to tag along is buy it. If you're responsible for bringing something and you don't have the time to make it fucking buy it. Like you don't have to have everything homemade and Pinterest worthy. If it's a more convenient option for you and it fits within your goals, whether that's a financial goal, a time goal, or a health and fitness goal, do it. I'm, I'm really glad you said that because that's instantly what came to my mind there was like and I don't obviously like everybody's financial situation is different but I think most most people have a range of disposable income whether that's two dollars or ten dollars or a hundred dollars whatever it is you have a range <laughs> there's times of year where it's worth sacrificing what you use that disposable income on to buy back some time or freedom yep Right. Absolutely. If, if it means that you don't get to go to the movies this week because you're going to buy that part of that meal instead of make it. But in doing so, you're freeing up an extra hour or two hours of your time like that is a no brainer, guys. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I can't I can't stress that enough. I tell this to people all the time, like during these busy, busy, busy weeks, get a meal prep service. Hire somebody to do a task that you don't have the time to do. And I know these aren't always options, but there's there's many versions of this too. Like Kelly's saying, like just buy the dessert instead of make the dessert. Yeah. That's that's the exact same thing. Good. That's my list. I love that one. Did you want to um, add anything? What's that? Did you want to add or even refute anything? No. No, I don't want you to yell at me. Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I think I think the big thing for me is that we need to we need to remember who we are, what our goals are, and why they're important to us as we come into any schedule change. And then we need to we need to reset our our BAMs and what our priorities look like. 
always 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 I, I would challenge you guys like do this frequently um now if if you know that this is going to be a crazy busy time of year but you look at those goals and what's important to you and they're still important to you then completely pushing them aside is not the right answer but it's probably not realistic to continue moving at the pace that you've been moving. And that's fine too. find that middle ground where you can keep moving forward, where you can still prioritize the things that are important to you, whether that's exercise or eating well or sleeping well, or whatever it is that's important to you find, find a way to integrate that, even if it's at a lesser capacity so that you can keep moving towards the version of you that you're working on. Mm -hmm. That's great. One of the other things too, I've talked about this sort of in general, but treating treating those blocks of time that you spend at the gym or meal prep, if you've already got some kind of discipline in place, treating it like an appointment with another professional that you aren't taking out of the calendar, right? So for example, you and I had a, a two o'clock booking today to record these podcasts. If this is a crazy time of year, I don't just take you out of my agenda and go to the mall because Christmas gifts need to be purchased and pies need to be made, right? I keep this in as a respected scheduled appointment with a professional. Why then would I remove my gym time or my meal prep time if this is something really important and high priority for my health and fitness and treat it as less worthy just because someone else wants my time or someone else wants me to create or manifest something right hmm. um so so treating yourself like like the professional appointment that you would anyone else yeah it's a great point even even to piggyback off of that um there's there's something to be said for the momentum that we build from from holding a routine also and so if you wake up every morning at 5 30 and go to the gym and then all of a sudden you stop doing that, it's not easy to walk back into that habit. Mm -hmm. Now, you might not be able to always wake up at 5.30 to go to the gym, but I would challenge the idea that you could still, on those days where, where that's not going to happen, you could still get up 10 minutes early and go for a short walk, and that, that becomes a placeholder to yeah. that, that action that we're creating, right? Rather than just being like, shit, I'm not doing it this week's a write off. Wake up 10 minutes early, do something each day that week to become the placeholder to carry that momentum forward. Um, that it's a really powerful action to keep taking to to hold something that's that you know you want to get back to that's important to you. Yeah. I'll say too, just because this is kind of floating around in my brain right now. Um Anticipating and researching could be on this list too. So if you are someone who travels for the holidays and people aren't used to you coming or people coming to you, um, you know, making sure that you're looking up where the gyms are, if that is part of your discipline, making sure that if you're not going to be able to get to that gym or use your own equipment, asking the people you're staying with, you know, what do you have access to? Or if you know you're going to be in a hotel, you know, talk to your trainer or your coach and say, can I have a hotel kind of workout to adjust and, and meet those goals still? Like we can, like you always talk about, it's that dial, right? I might not be able to do 10 out of 10 workout that I normally do in the gym, but I now have a, a, a three day hotel workout that I can still do body weights with, um, to keep me, like you said, a placeholder, um, still moving. Sweet. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I, I like it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I've missed. I think we've, I think we've covered, uh, I think we've covered everything that I'd hoped to touch on for this episode. I hope it gives people a different way to think of, of, as you approach this crazy time of year. Um, actually there, there is one last piece of advice I want to leave is that if you're, if your goals if your goals are important enough to you, this is something we do with our clients all the time. So, so our clients have to hit their nutrition goals 80% of the time. So in a, in a typical calendar month for 30 days, they have to hit it 24 of those days in order to continue making progress. There's going to be months you don't, that's, that's fine. You don't, you don't get punished or anything like that. Unless, unless Kelly's working with you, she's the mean one. Uh, <laughs> so you have to hit 24 days on on nutrition target you have six days of freedom so we start looking ahead in a month like december and we're like oh yeah this one this one this one this one 
you're going to have to decide where the sacrifices lie and where you're going to allow yourself that freedom if you want to keep moving forward, which I would challenge that most people do want to keep moving forward. They just don't plan ahead enough. And it gets to the point where it's like, oh, I'm screwed. But if you had looked at this earlier, you would you would have been able to say, I can make sac- more sacrifice now, early December, in order to give myself more freedom then later December, and it wouldn't be as much of a challenge. So just just a thought, like, look at where you're willing to make sacrifice and where you're where you're not and wh- what that might look like for you so that you can keep moving forward. That's great. Um, is that your tip or do you have one more for us? No, my tip is uh, if you're doing a lot of traveling this time of year, bring bands with you. Like brand, bands, are the, uh, this is the cheapest form of exercise equipment that that is the most versatile. You you can do entire workouts with bands. You could get one band for like, I don't know, 10 bucks and and do full body workouts with it. So where, where body weight is certainly an, an option a band's going to fold up in your suitcase or bag and be able to go anywhere with you. And it's going to open up the variety of what you're able to do so that you're not stuck just being bored doing like push-ups and squats in your hotel room. Now you've got a lot of options. Beautiful. That's great. Do you want me to close out the show today? Yeah, do it. Okay, cool. Um, If you have a second, we'd love for you to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening from. If you're feeling um, extra generous, rating and giving a review for the show is amazing. It helps us reach a wider um, audience, which is fantastic. If you can take a screenshot, share and um, share to whatever platform that you're, you're on Facebook or Instagram, let your friends know that this podcast exists and share this podcast with a link to someone who you know struggles through this busy time of year um, just to give them some some healthy tips and tricks to get through with their sanity why don't you always do that you're better at that than me (laughs) thanks (laughs) you're the host so (laughs) (laughs) thanks for listening everyone take care 